Okay, um, this room has radiant floor heat, um, and I just want to explain how I did it, or what's supplying the heat. This room is um, it's 20 by 20 feet, and uh, it's on a slab, okay, and it's got PEX tubing in the floor for radiant heat. And what I'm using is a tankless water heater to supply it. And I um, just want to show you that right now the temperature in here is 71 degrees. And the temperature outside right now is um, it's about 34, 35, something like that. And the water heater is not running right now. It's set, the thermostat is set for 70. So obviously it's not running. But anyway, um, I just want to explain how I accomplished this with this tankless water heater. Oh you know, yes, I also, want, I also wanted to mention about this room that you'll notice that it has an awful lot of glass. Okay, like I say, the temperature outside right now is about 35 degrees, something like that. And... I mean the windows are all high performance and all that stuff, you know, and it, you know you got R19 insulation in the walls and yada yada yada, but still, even with all this glass, you know, you have an awful lot of heat loss. But still, you know, the floor heat right now, okay, the system is shut off right now. But right now you can see the floor heat, it's it's 78 degrees. 77, 78 degrees. Okay. And the system has not been on enough for, oh, I don't know, probably, I don't know, since this morning sometime. So the floor is radiating heat into the room. And so even though it's only 34 or 35 degrees outside, the, uh, the hot water heat system is not on right now, and the temperature in here is still 71 degrees. And to me, that's pretty impressive. I really like that. Now, I, originally, when I had the system put in, um, I was running it off of a well, I, a forced vent water heater. It worked quite well. Uh, the thing that, the problem with the forced vent water heater was the fact that, you know, the temperature would have to drop, you know, it was set at about 120 degrees. And then it was cycled back on around maybe 60, I mean, sorry, probably about 100 degrees, something like that. So you get this variation in temperature between 120 and 100 degrees. Okay, so the floor temperature never really got up high enough to be, you know, um, to achieve maximum effectiveness. But since I put the tankless water heater in, uh, what comes out of the water heater is a continuous 130 degrees that never changes. It stays at a constant 130 degrees. And, you know, I, you know, I take showers and stuff like that. I got the wash machine going and yada, yada, yada. While the, while the floor heat is running and I don't notice any major uh, difference in temperature. It's, you know, what comes out of the water heater stays at 130 degrees. So, I don't know, I personally, I'm really impressed with it. I think it works a lot better than the conventional water heater did. So, just so you know that, you know, I just, I just wanted to make that point. Okay, that's a ream uh, tankless water heater that I installed about, about four weeks ago. Okay. Um, it works real well. It has, it'll, you know, right now I have the thermostat set at 130 degrees, temperature, you know, water temperature, and it'll supply that temperature up to 5.6 gallons per minute, which is an awful lot. It's um, approximately 200,000 BTU when it's running at full tilt. Um, and it's connected uh, to the in floor radiant system that I showed you in the other room 
and that's then that's down in the basement so I'll show you that to you now how that works okay uh, okay the heart of the system is actually this guy right here that's a heat exchanger or heat transfer unit whatever you want to call it and basically what it does it um, transfers heat from one loop to another loop okay so now what you cut here is the hot water from the water heater comes down goes across and goes into the into the transfer unit comes up here and goes up through the pump and back up to the water heater so that's a continuous loop it's a continuous loop that just keeps going around and around and around all right and this side of it the water comes in from the floor of that room I showed you a little while ago this way it comes into the transfer unit comes up and across and goes back out and it goes back up and across and it comes down and goes into that tunnel right there you see and it goes you know across to that room I just showed you it's about you know uh, approximately 20 feet something like that back in there okay so basically what I'm trying to say is you have two loops you have the loop the water heater loop here on this side and you have the floor loop on this side and like I said too they both have their own pumps right here all right and the way I got it set up right now the thermostat uh, when, it, when the thermostat calls for heat it turns on both pumps all right um, then they have a limit switch which I have set right now for about 105 degrees I believe 110 degrees I think it is right now that'll turn off in case the floor gets too hot the return water gets too hot it'll shut the system down Right now, nothing is running, so these thermometers right now are basically almost at zero. The only connection between the, the, um, the floor heat, the floor loop, and the hot water heater loop is here is this pipe right here and it goes to this 12 volt or 12 pound regulator okay so what that basically does the water from the hot water heater loop will supply the floor heat loop and keep it at you know 12 pounds of pressure at all times and in fact if you look at the gauge right here you can see it's at about 12 pounds right now Then you have your spiral vent, if the case is any error in the system. Works very well. Okay, now just for the sake of illustration, I turned the thermostat up in the other room to get this thing running. Okay. Um, now what's happening here. The water from the from that heat transfer unit or heat exchanger, what do you want to call it, is coming in this way. That's the cold water supply, and it's coming out here and going back down into the basement. Okay. So the water, basically, what's happening right now is coming out, going up through the water heater, and then back down to the transfer unit just around and around that's all it's doing now I should mention that Reem makes no um, uh, according to what I read <clears throat> they didn't have any um, 
information, or I should say that they did not research this heater for the for for uh, floor heat use. Um, it was basically just designed to supply domestic hot water and nothing else. Okay, and I figured, hey, it's worth a try, you know. So I've decided to hook up to my floor heat, and it's been great. I haven't had any kind of a problem with it. Okay, back in the basement again. Very hot. Kind of hot. So it's giving up the heat from the input side to the output side. Okay. Um, you can see the temperature now from the water coming back from the floor. Uh, it's about... Eighty degrees, approximately, and after it runs for quite a while, it actually will get up to about maybe ninety-five, something like that. The temperature going out to the floor is um, about a hundred right now. Yes, yeah, so about a hundred, about a hundred degrees. Okay. That's the temperature of the water that's coming out of the seed exchanger. It's going out to the floor. And then it comes back from the floor at about 80 degrees. So it loses about 20 degrees, you know, you know, into the you know, you know, into the into the slab in the other room. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. Well, if you like this video, if you thought it was informative, uh, I'd really appreciate you giving me a thumbs up. Thank you.